Hey guys, welcome back to another Sparkle Adventure. Welcome to part two of me setting up this Navy clipbook from Filofax. In part one, I put together two dashboards and I decorated the front inside cover. So let's get into it and jump right in where part one left off. Next up in this planner setup, I wanted to do top tabs. And what I love to do is use acetate for them. So that way I can put it in front of a cute dashboard like the ones I made in part one. So you can kind of see through the acetate to see that dashboard, but it doesn't totally obstruct it. The TPS kit came with one sheet of acetate and I was able to use that for two dividers. And then I had the Chevron gold polka dot pattern in my stash already. And the golds aren't perfect matches, but I think they're pretty darn close. And then next I grabbed the tabs that came with the kit. There were two different styles. As you can see, there was one that was just a straight navy blue. I think it had a bit of a prism effect to it, um, but I liked the patterned ones better because I thought that the blue blended too much with the planner itself. And my plan is to cut down those lined pages that you see in the back. And so you would be able to see through the top tabs. And if they were just blue and you could see the blue planner, you know, on the back side, I think it just went, it, it would blend too much. So I loved using the pattern ones. If you noticed, I trimmed the acetate page so that it matched the size of a dashboard. That way the top tab will stick up above the dashboard, but won't stick out of the planner itself. Again, I'll be trimming the aligned paper down in the back so that way the top tabs align with the top of the planner and then all the goodies, the spreads and notes or whatever are within the top tab. So that way the top tabs are above the planner pages, but still in the planner. I hope that makes sense. So what I just did was I put the acetate piece in the planner itself so I could see where the rings were. I didn't want to put the top tab all the way aligned to the left in case it interfered with one of the rings. So I put it in there just to kind of line it up the right way and then I glued it down. Next up, I'm just going to go through and make sure that they're all kind of distributed as close to evenly as possible and then put the rest of the top tabs on the acetate before we laminate. Okay, so now that we have the top tabs glued down, well, first off, I, I feel like I should say, no, I did not measure it out. I absolutely hate measuring out tabs. I just kind of do it by sight and I'm not really worried about it being exact. Okay, next up is laminating. This is a Scotch laminator I got from Target a few months ago. I'm not sure if I would recommend it. I mean, it was pretty budget friendly, I think, so far as laminators go. It was only $17 and it did come with five pouches. 
However, I've had some issues with it jamming, as you'll see here. Well, the last time I used it, it jammed really badly and I had to do surgery on it. And then when I went to go laminate these dividers, I didn't realize that when I put it all back together, I didn't get all the parts and pieces in the right spot. And so when I went to go put this page through the machine, it got caught and then kind of crumpled up a little bit. Watch for it. You'll see that little rope piece coming out. That's not supposed to happen. So this is me urgently trying to hit the release and yank that sheet out because I didn't have any other acetate that I wanted to use. Luckily, I was able to get the sheet out really quickly before I got too bad. So I turned off the machine, put everything back where it belonged. Then I was able to laminate these dividers. And the one that got crumpled a little bit, I just ran it back through the laminator and it smoothed out everything and it worked just fine. After I laminated them, I went ahead and trimmed them down to size. And as you'll see, I just took my little craft scissors and I trimmed around the top tab. I probably could have gone between each letter, but I, I don't know, I felt like that would have made it too flimsy. And now that I'm saying it out loud, that doesn't make any sense at all. So I would just trim around the outside letters and then I left the top. I think I trimmed it down a little bit so it wasn't so tall, but yeah, I just um, left the top tab intact. So there's the first one done. I kind of figured for time's sake, once you've seen one, you don't really need to see all four. So I just repeated this process on the other three and trimmed down the top tab. As you can see, the final step was to use my individual hole punch. I didn't want to try to use the A5 size that I used to originally punch the acetate. I didn't want to jam it. I know that happens a lot with the Happy Planner punch. So I just used my individual hole punch and punch the holes out. And then I get to put it in my planner. I'm so happy with how these dividers turned out. Again, I love to use acetate so that way you can still see the super cute dashboard behind it and it just adds a little cuteness. Now that I finished the top tabs, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to go ahead and add a couple small accessories. When you open the planner, I thought it'd be really cute to add something to the front of this acetate piece, but I didn't want to use anything big to cover up the dashboard behind it. And then I remembered those small square die cuts that came with the kit. And so I shuffled through and then I picked which one I thought went best and added that. Next up, I wanted to add one of the pen loops that came with this kit. I think this was a new product, actually. I don't think she's done this before that I can remember. Um, I'm so glad that she sent it because it just obviously matches the kit and the supplies so perfectly. Although I will say, full disclosure, it doesn't stick on this planner very well. Um, it is adhesive. You just pull off the little backing that you see right there and then you slap it down. Maybe I needed to use another kind of adhesive or maybe I'm just really rough on my planner because I put it in my purse all the time. I don't put it in a planner sack or anything. And so the pen gets moved around and then it ends up just pulling the pen loop off with the pen when the pen comes off. So anyway, not super sturdy, but it's totally doable if you want to maybe add another kind of adhesive to it. I think it would work just fine. accessory I'm going to add for now is this bow stack bookmark. It came in a, another TPS kit. I can't remember which one. It came with two and this is the smaller of the two. You can see here I'm lining it up to figure out where I should punch it to make sure it's kind of lined correctly. But anyway, I love to use this bookmark to indicate where my weekly spread is for the current week.
another dashboard, and that means we got to start with figuring out which paper you want to use. This dashboard is going to be in front of the section that is indicated for my weekly spreads. And I decided I wanted to try to do a pocket dashboard so I can put any like kit leftovers in the pocket and it can travel with me. First things first, we have to trim the paper down to size. Next, I'm going to score the piece that's gonna go in front, like the front of the pocket. When I cut the paper down, I cut it a half inch wider and taller than the pocket would be, like the dashboard. So that way I could score a quarter inch on the sides and a half inch on the bottom. And that will give the pocket a little bit of width. So when I put stuff in there, it's not like, you know, pushing the pocket off the page. I hope this makes sense. Lastly, my last cut on the front of the pocket is I'm just gonna cut little, I mean, I'm gonna cut it diagonally as you can see, so I can have a nice diagonal front pocket. Next thing is just to glue this down onto the back of the dashboard, punch it out and make it cute. To decorate the pocket. I saw these glitter edgers in the stack of supplies and I thought they would be a really cute detail on the actual pocket itself, these scalloped edges. Um, but as you can see, I was like, wait, nope, don't pull it off. I took my glue stick and I put glue around the bottom of the edger and then I cut the whole sticker sheet out. I cut the edges that I wanted and then I just used that the glued edge and pressed it to the front of the pocket and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. I did actually go ahead and reapply some glue stick to the bottom of the edger, but like I said, I put it right behind the pocket and then pressed it down so that the front of the pocket would stick to that edger. Then I just did this whole thing one more time to finish off the end of the pocket and then I decorated the front.
now that we have the glitter edgers on the pocket and added that detailing, I'm just gonna use a couple pieces to decorate the front. Um, I loved this die cut. I thought that the greenery on the piece was really pretty and that it really added to the front of the pocket with that pattern because the pattern's pretty simple. So really any of these die cuts would work great. So because the die cut has the white color that's also on the patterned paper, they kind of blend together a little bit. And I thought that one of these craft paper doilies would really help the die cut really stand out from the page. And it ties together the kind of brown tones of the glitter edgers and the wood box that's on the die cut. There we have the pocket dashboard for the weeks section of my planner. I definitely wanted to keep this one simple. I mean, I just don't think it needed a whole lot. I love that with just a doily, a die cut and puffy sticker, it was good to go. Okay, so that is it for this video, the dashboard and the tab dividers. I did make another dashboard for this setup. It was a pocket dashboard. It really just added a bunch of places for me to put things if I needed somewhere to put it. However, this video has gone on a long time and full disclosure, I filmed this a long time ago. So I don't really remember all the measurements, but I will be doing my October setup this week. And when I do, I'll make another one of these pocket dashboards. I'll write down all the notes and measurements, and then I'll, I'll go into it in that next video. So make sure you subscribe so you see that and the October setup to come. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.